Good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon's um, CCC Maker Mapping Your College Ecosystem webinar. My name is Amy Schultz and I'm representing NACI, the National Association for Community College Entrepreneurship. And we are pleased to bring today's webinar to you. Um, a little bit about uh, logistics. We are recording this webinar and it will be available later on the CCC Maker website as well as YouTube. So if you or a colleague are not able to make it, um, you can find it there. Uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free to use the Q&A feature at the end um, and I will, I, I can address any questions at the end. Um, today, for today's webinar, uh, our first CCC Maker Ecosystem webinar back in December, uh, we covered uh, kind of the, the general overview of, a, of an ecosystem as it relates to uh, making. And, and, um, and, the, and we also um, touched on Kumu, which is the software we'll be using to map our webinars for the CCC Maker um, project. So um, for today, we're going to really focus in internally on um, the ecosystem with, on your college campus and how you can engage that ecosystem and really identify who should be involved with your maker ecosystem and some strategies for how to do that. Uh, so today we'll be covering uh, just a general overview as far as what the maker ecosystem and specifically towards your college campus. Why do you need to identify a college ecosystem? Uh, how does inquiry-based learning um, and how does it impact the ecosystem development and who should be included on your college ecosystem, maker ecosystem, and strategies for relationship building and really cultivating that in the future. I'd like to start with the Maker City Playbook. Um, this was a book written by Dale Doherty. Um, Peter, who is, who um, Dale is actually the lead advisor on the CCC Maker Advisory Committee, so we're pleased to have him involved with the project. Um, also, Peter Hirschberg and Marsha um, Kratoff. Um, if you haven't checked out this um, playbook, I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, you can find it at makercitybook.com. Um, but in defining what a making ecosystem is, and this will probably be good um, for our participants to know, it's self-organized, so it's not a very, it doesn't have to be a very formal ecosystem. It can be um, self-organized with really the people that are most interested in getting involved in, in playing. Um, it's also, people are united by a shared sense of purpose, so you can think about how that might apply on your college campus. And there's not necessarily an official leader, so this is what they have found in the research on um, what a making ecosystem looks like. Um, another key component, and this is something to keep in mind as you're looking for um, people to collaborate with on your campus, is uh, change starts up on the edge and then works its way to the center. So with innovation, it starts kind of on the edges. It might be something that you're doing on the side, maybe not incorporating it um, formally into a class, but you're doing it with a group of, you know, a student organization or it's something a little more informal. And then as, as you um, work the momentum, it can work its way to the center, meaning that it gets to be more formalized, which is exactly what we're working on in this, in this particular project with CCC Maker. Um, here is an example, an image of a, um, a, of a, a making ecosystem and what the different components and you know, different types of organizations involved. So this is something to keep in mind, especially as we move forward with the uh, external um, ecosystem partners, but um, we're, today we're going to focus in on the education piece. You can see all the different players in the diversity within an ecosystem, especially for making. Uh, your college ecosystem. So some things to keep in mind as you're starting to map out um, who should be involved in your ecosystem and what um, what is the purpose of a college ecosystem. Um, when you're building a college ecosystem, you're really building for the maker culture on campus. So probably most of you um, involved with the CCC Maker Project, this is uh, probably you know something new to your campus. Um, people might not quite understand how it's integrated into traditional academic learning, um, and so this is something like really starting to introduce these concepts to people on your campus. So, and the major 
concepts and principles in making are innovation and collaboration. So innovation really comes through collaboration. So finding those colleagues on your um, campus that you can collaborate with, you're, you'll find ways of innovation, not only in making in the traditional sense that your students will be doing, but as far as innovation in education. Um, develop a capacity and sustainability. So think about um, different partners that you want to be involved with that can help with the capacity and sustainability of your making program and making progress. Um, so there'll be key uh, partners along the journey. We're going to get into some of that as far as the logistical support um, on your campus that could really, we, we want to make sure that they're included in this because um, it could help with um, some help along the way. Um, and then if we go back to the concept of starting from the edges, that um, innovation starts from the edges and then it works its way through the center. Well, I'm sure probably many of the people on this webinar are um, starting from the edges in your own work if you're involved with this project. And I'm sure there's people, other people on your campus that are also doing innovative things, maybe trying to fly under the radar with it. Um, so find those tender spirits on, across your campus and unite. Um, I wanted to share a little bit about innovation pedagogy, and then also we'll get into inquiry-based learning and how this kind of can help relate as you're building your um, college ecosystem. So this was some work done by Tony Wagner, who was the expert in residence um, at Harvard, at Harvard's Innovation Lab. And uh, he's done some work in what is uh, innovation pedagogy. So some things that he found were, um, it's a culture of collaboration. So within the classroom, you want to really foster a culture of collaboration, not, um, not focusing on individual achievement. If you think about it, that is something that is um, kind of counterintuitive to our traditional system that, you know, people are, are where you, you know, focused on their individual grades and achievement and, and to get to that next level. So it's really kind of taking a different look at um, learning and incorporating that into the culture within the classroom or learning environment. Um, it also is multidisciplinary. So it's getting out of the silos of um, a narrow focus in disciplines and really allowing students to learn across disciplines um, within a project or within um, a topic area. Uh, it's embracing experimentation. So giving space for students to experiment with ideas and, um, and, and learn through doing and learn through um, experimentation. It's a focus on creation instead of consumption. So really letting students have the um, space for creativity to work on their um, their ideas, and and instead of in, instead of the idea of consumption, where you know the sage on the stage, uh, you know feeding the students the information, the students are um, needing to go find it on their own. And it's also really looking at the intrinsic reward. So where students learn. Um, through their own desires. So what is it that they want to learn in the intrinsic re a reward for the sake of learning? Um, making an inquiry-based learning. So learners start with the um, inquiry. So inquiry-based learning, and this is really kind of the root of what the CCC makes their project um, was based on, is really taking the inquiry-based learning and how, how can we document what students are learning and really integrate that through throughout the institution. Um, and what the, the idea be, be, behind inquiry-based learning is that it, students start with what the problem or the inquiry is. So they come in with a question, and then after that, they pull in the disciplines that are necessary to answer that question or to solve that, that problem. Um, that is also kind of counterintuitive to our, our current or traditional education system in that, you know, traditionally learners are introduced to disciplines and silos and then maybe would have the opportunity to approach an inquiry by pulling in disciplines later. So this is really kind of flips it where we start with the inquiry and the disciplines evolve from there. Uh, there's a book, Essentials of, the, of Transdisciplinary 
research um, using problem-centered methodologies that was the source for this, um, but this is also very useful in incorporating, you know, how to, how to think about teaching. Okay, so why would we want to know about inquiry-based learning and what does this have to do with our ecosystem? Well, a great example is Not Impossible Lab. So Mick Eberle is a film producer, um, and he read an article about a boy in Sudan who had um, was a victim of a bombing in, in his war-torn country and had lost both of his arms. Um, and he just thought, you know, there's that was just not acceptable. And um, he was determined to figure out how to help this boy thousands of miles away um, in a developing country, um, how to help him create his own prosthetics. So in doing so, Nick was a film producer. He was not a scientist or engineer, but he realized that if he wanted to make this happen, that he would have to pull in many different um, experts to make it this a possibility. So if you think about the inquiry or the challenge, and in the middle here we have an arm for Daniel, that's the boy in Sudan. Um, if we, what does it take to um, build a prosthetic arm using a 3D printer? And so if we look through the different areas that um, you know, one would need to tap into to make this possible, it's really across many disciplines. So we have mechanical engineering, physiology, computer science, international relations and culture, 3D printing, resource development, um, you know, if there was a need for grants or um, donations. So many different areas, and this is just really touching, scratching the surface on this. Um, so if you think about it, that is, we started with the inquiry, and then the different disciplines um, emerged from that inquiry. So if we take that concept um, and think about your own students, and if they have come to you with, with a challenge or an inquiry or, you know, a question, would you be able to be the connector to get across the silos on your campus to get them in touch with the right experts? In, that, in the different areas that they would need. So think about that for a second. If you know, if, if a student came with you, came to you with a question like a, building a prosthetic arm, you might not know how to do it yourself. But would you? Could you bring in the different people to make that possible? So it's really looking across, uh, working across disciplines, um, and thinking through who is it that you need to connect with. Um, how can you share the making ethic with co colleagues across disciplines? So it's not only working with your students and being the connector to, um, to your colleagues and, and the subject matter experts that um, you could connect them with, but it's also conveying what the making ethic is and that sense of collaboration for innovation um, with your colleagues across disciplines. So um, think about you know, ways that you're able to do that. In doing that, so let's think about, we're, and, and in this section, we're really looking at faculty for the most part. Um, we're looking at people with um, special expertise and, and knowledge in different disciplines. Um, so who are your interdisciplinary partners? At Stacey, we um, use an entrepreneurial method called effectuation, and, and the first um, concept with that is bird in the hand. So what resources do you already have available? Make a list of who you have already been collaborating with across disciplines, or who you've already worked with and you have some partnerships or relationships with. Um, so that you can start with that. And then think through, okay, if you have students that came to you with uh, questions or challenges, um, think of who should be involved um, with it. Who would you like to work with um, and could have that special knowledge or expertise to help in the making process, um, and, and in addition, who do you, you know, who do you click with? I mean, maybe you haven't uh, collaborated with someone, but you you um, have a friendship on campus or, you know, different ways, so think about who you like to work with, and um, so those are a little bit easier for the ask, and then the third round would be who do you need to work with, um, who should be invited for special expertise. So you can start with a, a list of, start an inventory and, and list out, you know, these different faculty who you could get involved with. 
Okay, if we take the concept of the inquiry-based learning, and we, we did that for, you know, if a student came to you with an inquiry, um, and you, how, how is that used as a pedagogy, let's, let's flip that, and we're really looking at an inquiry-based approach in your own programming. So let's say um, you're putting together the CCC maker uh, proposal, and uh, there's a lot of moving parts in that proposal. Who do you need to work with on your campus? And so what you could do is maybe start with the different pieces of it and then build out a map of who should be involved. So certain um, partners, and so these are mainly non-faculty on this side, um, you have the work-based learning, because you're gonna need to have, uh, or your internship uh, director, if you have an internship director, or who's doing your work-based learning on your campus. The career center, the librarian, a lot of um, libraries are now starting to host maker spaces, so this is a good person to get involved, or um, colleagues to get involved. Your college foundation, the foundation can help with um, resource development and also community outreach as you're needing to forge relationships for um, internships and uh, you know uh, with industry the college foundation usually has a lot of connections that um, they can help you with um, grants and career technical education so they have um, special funding specifically for these sorts of activities uh, workforce development and non-credit um, a lot of new New programming or new curriculum can be tested out in the non-credit side, so maybe you have some innovation that you want to test out. This would be a good partner to have um, in your project. Uh, student activities, so student um, clubs and organizations are great to engage, especially as you start getting into events and outreach to students. Um, they can be your boots on the ground and, and really help out, and, and then they're getting experiential learning opportunities in the process. Uh, student success, so um, work with your um, chief um, student services officer. Um, there's a lot of activities going on in the student success initiative um, that they might be interested in the work that you're doing in student engagement and making. And then another option is disabled students programs and services um, because the, the making um, really gives opportunities for students to learn in different ways in the traditional classroom. So they might also be interested. These are just a few ideas of um, possible partners across campus, and you probably have other ideas, you know, based on your own campus and own relationships. Okay, so the, then we also have um, inquiry-based approach. So if you are starting this process with your um, CCC maker proposal and, and what this will look like, so in addition to those partners and programming, there's also some key partners in logistical support. So um, I learned from my time in working in CT and career technical education and economic workforce development, the business office should be one of your best friends. Um, so it's great to forge relationships there. That will help as, um, as new funds come in and, and you need to do contracts. So this is a good place to really um, invest some energy into. Uh, as you are doing your documentation, the data or institutional research folks are also very good partners to have. Um, public information officer and outreach, so to help um, really promote your programs and the work that you're doing. Facilities director and staff, so as you are starting to do, um, actually build your uh, maker space or innovation lab, um, if you are doing events, uh, the facilities director or equivalent on your campus is also a good person um, to be able to collaborate with. And um, also other support staff like uh, IT, audiovisual staff that can help as you're doing events or if you're needing um, assistance with getting your tech set up. So let's take this inquiry-based approach. Oh, and then... Um, then there's a few others. So some campuses or colleges have um, connectors that work on a regional or statewide level or even within the community. So think about um, people that are housed on your campus or associated with your college that um, can really help make connections in other ways. So regional and statewide talent um, possibilities, perhaps your college um, hosts a, a statewide sector navigator in one of the 10 industry sectors. 
Um, and then for each region, there are deputy sector navigators in those industries. And remember, we're thinking also interdisciplinary. So maybe you are um, in advanced manufacturing and your campus hosts a uh, BS in, in agriculture and natural resources. You might not think to um, work with that DSN, but think if we're thinking across disciplines, they might be able to, um, you know, bring some resources and ideas to the table. Um, ag tech, for instance, is a very big field, and so there's a lot of crossover there. So be creative in thinking about how you want to forge these relationships. Um, there's also a variety of um, te um, technical business providers or CAS that are um, housed at colleges throughout the state. They're usually um, statewide paths, so it could be everything from data to the K-14 pathways, which they're great to, you know, have connections with your local high schools, um, to, you know, soft skills and employability. So think through, um, you know, take a look at your directory and your org chart for your college and see who's, who's there and who might be a good partner. Also, don't forget to um, involve your trustees. They are usually very passionate about what's going on with the college. They have a lot of connections out in the community. So, um, you know, depending on your college political environment and if this is, you know, something that is um, acceptable to do, you know, if you are able to engage your trustees, at the very minimum, um, invite them to your events if you have a maker fair or pitch competition. Um, you know, make sure to invite them, and, and they have also a lot of um, connections and, and people they can connect you, you to out into the community. So here's an example, and I'm not sure how well you can see this, but this is an example. If we're going to take an inquiry-based approach in programming, so we're going to start with the chat and then work our way out. Um, and then let's see who needs to come to the table. And this can help in building your ecosystem map and it also in, it can help in your CCC maker proposal on where you need to start forging relationships now to make this a successful program. Um, so let's say we're going to do a college maker fair. Um, the first one we want to look at interdisciplinary faculty. So who are some of the faculty that we would want to come? Now it depends on you know, your maker fair and what the theme is. But um, just for fun, maybe visual art, computer science, uh, engineering, business and entrepreneurship. Also, we don't want to forget the chief instructional officers and the deans in each of those areas. So think through, and if you look at it, that's a few different divisions there between from um, arts and humanities to engineering to business. So it's, it's all over the place. Um, and those are just a few examples. So you probably have more that you can think of on your own campus. Um, if we look at our cross partner, um, cross campus partners that would want, we would want to have involved in a maker fair, let's take a look. So we, um, it would be great to have the internship director. They probably have contacts to industry and, um, you know, this will also help with the metrics with meeting your deliverables for the, the CCC maker mini grant. Um, we need to get internships lined up. Uh, student activities, so they know how to do events. They also, you can get um, student clubs involved. So think through the different types of student clubs within student activities. So maybe there's a marketing club, maybe there's already a makers club. That, you know, what, ha, ha, think of the different things that you need to um, do to, to do an event like this. Um, workforce development, they also have this um, ties to industry and beyond. Uh, student Activities. Oh, that's twice. So, um, student services and uh, your um, chief uh, student services officer. So, those are just some examples, but you can think through like if you were going to do a maker fair, who should be involved? Um, as far as campus outreach, so who can help get the word out and kind of make the connections beyond the campus? So, the public information officer, you'll want to work closely with that person. Um, your foundation, again, they can help make those um, connections beyond the campus. They can also help with funding if you, you know, are needing some funding for the events or for prize money or that sort of thing. Um, they might have some options for you there. The K-12 liaison, so people that can help with your um, connections to high 
school. This is also a maker's fair would be a great recruiting opportunity to let um, uh, local high school students know about the great things going on at your college. So, so don't forget those, those folks. They can really do a lot. Um, and then, of course, you know, your statewide and regional talent, if you have them at your campus, um, the DSNs, the De Deputy Sector Navigators, they are, um, uh, their purpose is really to serve the, all the colleges in their region. So reach out to them, even if they're not housed directly at your campus. Um, and then finally, logistical support. So we went over this a little bit earlier, but things like, okay, you need facilities, the business office or the financial piece. Um, you know, if you need IT and AV, um, food services. So how, how well are you connected with, with your food services? Those are always really good friends to have. Um, so this is an example. If we take the idea of an inquiry-based learning like we're doing in the classroom and then flip that for how you would do your own programming, start with the inquiry and then see what it is you need to help solve it. Um, this is a good exercise and this is a good way to help build out your own ecosystem. Um, so now we know we have a long list of people who should be involved in our um, college ecosystem for, for Makerspace. And now we need to figure out how to get them on board. So first thing is to prioritize and schedule for um, relationship building. So this is not, you know, I know everyone on this call is very busy. Um, and this is not something that will happen without a little bit of nurturing. So, um, you know, make some room in your schedule. Um, uh, if you're just getting kind of on board and you, there's new people you need to reach out to, a cup of coffee, um, you know, once a week meeting a colleague for coffee and just sending down to get to know them, hear what their, their plans are, what they're doing in their program, what their goals are, and look for areas of alignment where it can be really mutually beneficial to um, collaborate. So they are very excited about the work that you're doing too. Um, you can find the yeah, common interests and goals. Start small, um, so start with a small project maybe or collaboration and build the trust. And you might find that you know you start with a small project and maybe this person isn't the best to work with and you can see um, from small projects you know, where the strengths are, where the weaknesses are and kind of the best way to move forward. So um, that's always a good way to go. And then once you have built some trust and you understand each other's um, strengths and, and um, areas of improvement, you can start planning for the future and where you want to go um, with your collaboration and, and how they would fit in with the, your maker plans. So um, in conclusion, uh, you want to take a um, an approach that you're both a provider of inquiry-based learning. So you um, are going to, as, as a as a makerspace, a makerspace is a place for inquiry-based learning, and so you're going to be a provider of that. And in doing so, you really want to also serve as the connector to help connect your students to the right experts, either faculty or other um, partners across campus. So think of you know what it is you're going to need to provide for the students. Um, and then second, not only are you a provider of inquiry-based learning, but you actually are practicing those principles in building your projects and your ecosystem. So think about what your challenge is first, and then what are the resources that you're going to need to meet that challenge. So if you're putting together your CCC maker proposal, what are all the pieces and who are the people that need to be connected. Um, so start with your challenge and build out. Um, you want to build your internal ecosystem to meet the needs of um, what your project is and what your goals are. Uh, and, and in doing so, you really want to think through how, you know, what are the relationships that you need to start um, building? What are some that maybe you've worked with someone in the past and have kind of lost touch? Maybe it's time to rekindle that. So really build in some time in your own schedule to prioritize the relationship building. And I know that is very, um, I, I know that's a big ask with all that everyone has going on, but a little, you know, a cup of coffee here and there or um, building that time to, to really get to know someone and what their goals are can pay off um, 
huge dividends in the future. So um, that concludes today's webinar. Um, if, if you haven't already, please register with KUMU, and that's uh, K-U-M-U dot I-O. Um, you can use your, once you have your username, you can email it to me, and then um, I will set you up. I'll add you to the CCC Maker organization. You can also contact me for additional support. In addition, um, next week, the week of January 17th, we will have an updated template, um, so you can start using that to build out your um, ecosystem map. So in the meantime, you can just um, maybe take a look at the tutorials on Kumu. Um, we did go into Kumu in our very first webinar, so you can also find that um, on YouTube and um, on the CCC Maker site. So with that, I will, um, I'll see if we have any questions. And I'm sorry, I need to get out of the screen share and see if we have any questions. Okay, we do have a few chats. So, um, is anybody out there? So hopefully, okay. Um, Mary Reed um, asked, do you have a recommendation for a speaker to help provide information and motivation for the campus? Um, that's a great question, Mary, and I love your approach because that's a good way to kind of get people on board. So I would recommend, um, and Mary, I wonder, I'm so, I apologize, Mary, I'm not sure where you are um, located, um, but I would recommend maybe finding a colleague um, in your region. You're at Moore Park. Okay, great. Um, I. You know, I would check in with your DSN, um, who is Gayla, your DSN of small business is Gayla, um, oh, I forget her last name, I apologize, but she is working throughout the region and um, she would know which colleges are doing work and innovation and making, and she could probably help you with that. We can also, with um, Deborah Bird from Pasadena City College, who is the um, top of the CCC maker, Deborah might have some ideas for people um, that are involved in the maker movement um, in Southern California that you know would be close to you. But if you want to start in your region, you could start there. And I would be happy, Mary, if you wanted to um, you know set up a call and kind of brainstorm some ideas. So are there any other questions? And Deborah says she's glad to uh, she will help. Yes. Okay, well, so I think um, with that, we will end the um, webinar. So thank you so much for your time. Please do not hesitate to reach out to myself or um, Deborah um, if, if you are needing any assistance. And um, that's what we're here for. We're really excited to see the good work that you're all doing on your campuses. And um, we have a webinar next uh, Thursday, January 19th for our external ecosystem. So. Thank you very much.